Yeah, thank you. Quite curious that there are so many people here. Um, yeah, we will divide the talk into um, three small sessions. So the first, I will introduce what um, smart metering is, or what um, are we going to hack, or what um, privacy implications we um, want co to consider. Um, then um, Stefan will show you the privacy implication we have, and later on I show you some um, slides about hacking the smart meter. So what is a smart meter? Smart meter is an electrical power meter at um, the consumer side. So it's down in your cellar and it measures um, um, the power consumption. So why is it smart? It's smart because it's digital, so it's more precise and can measure um, the con consumption very um, pr uh, precisely. Um, it has a memory, so it has the possibility to store the consumption over the time. So you don't have an only value, uh, one value that you can read um, at the end of the year. You can um, see um, the power consumption during the whole time. And um, the other thing which makes it um, smart is it has a network connection. So it can transmit the acquired data. You are not um, in the need that you have to go down to the cellar. You can read it out um, remotely. Yeah, what are the advantages? The advantages is, oh, um, yeah. the advantages is um, that um, you can measure and um, optimize your own consumption. When you see how much do you um, consumed um, during the last day and you see that there are some lights switched on and you see the next day when you switch them off, you um, gain more um, money because you don't um, use so much energy. That is from the consumer point of view. And from the energy provider point of view, that is that they can issue variable service charges. So they can think about um, having more um, times the day where the um, current um, costs you more and um, other times in the night where it's um, um, less expensive. And what they say in the internet when you look over smart meters, they say that um, they helps them to um, utilize um, the power infrastructure. Even when everyone is doing um, solar cells and windcraft, then they need um, to know about the power and they say that smart meters are um, going to help them for this. So what is the hardware for a smart meter? The hardware is typically divided into two parts. So you have an energy meter, which is shown in this picture. So it's um, a digital uh, measurement um, instrument. And um, this is the really payment relevant um, device, which is in your cellar. And it's um, working like the other um, you had before, which was analog. And um, maybe it has the possibility to switch um, different um, prices and um, show the um, amount for different times a day. And attached to this, um, you can see it here in the upper part, um, is a gateway. So the gateway um, does the intelligent stuff. So it can record the data. It has a um, communication interface to um, the smart meter. Normally, it's um, via um, infrared signals. And it has an external interface, um, TCP IP, Ethernet, or GPIS. Um, it depends on um, your local site. And it can transmit the data to any other, any other person. So now let's switch and take some privacy implications. Hi. Hi. It's OK, so? Oh. Um, our motivation is um, that you can read from the uh, um, different data that is transferred to the um, energy yes. okay so um, <laughs> um, first of all I show um, something about our mo motivation um, after that we um, see our experimental setup um, our motivation is about uh, finding TV um, films and movies in the power um, signal transferred to um, the... Sorry, I'm really nervous. Uh, um, so, um, At the end, I show a little demo. So, um, <laughs> sorry. So, um, motivation um, for privacy is um, that the smart meter sends consumption um, 
data to the energy provider. Um, it's um, you can analyze this this um, data. So um, from the data, um, Mr. Hart shows in 1992 that you can um, identify several um, consumer devices uniquely. So um, what you see here is, um, for example, a refrigerator which um, has three power cycles and um, six heater cycles which um, Um, which are added to the signal. So, um, our experimental setup um, at the um, label is um, an easy meter as power meter and two different gateways. Um, we've used, um, first of all, the table connector 1.0, which sends one value every 10 seconds. This is um, not enough, so which um, for our Work so we switched um, to a COM1 from COMET, which sends um, one value per two seconds, which is equal to the real world um, easy meter with uh, meter read um, setup, which is applied in um, Dario's cellar, for example. Um, Discovery is. Um, is Hmm? Discovery? Yes. Okay, uh, Discovery is um, um, a company which um, um, sends you, uh, uh, which installs a smart meter for you and does um, this um, thing for you. And they have a web interface and um, the client can use um, this to plot his own data. So here you see the data consumption during um, a whole day, I think. And um, in the web interface, there are only the last three months available. And it's a basic Zoom functionality and you can't get um, the data. There's no RP provided to get out the data. And um, he wants to um, analyze this data. So um, um, as there is no RP um, um, pro provided by Discovery, um, when you look at the HTTP um, site and, and you see what um, HTTP GET request you have to do, um, then you can get um, all these values um, based uh, down to um, one value every um, two seconds. So you can get each value that was sent by the smart meter to um, the Discovery site and you can store them on your local hard disk for further um, for further calculations that he did. Maybe you want yes. to do the next? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So um, this is a detailed view of um, the web GUI. Um, at the um, upper top, there's the invoice um, value we have pixelized um, for anonymity. Um, you see the uh, consumption graph of a whole day. Um, it shows the consumer um, his consumption. Um, here's a little error in the picture you see. Um, it's based on the daylight saving time in Germany. Um, there's an uh, interpretation error um, within the data. Um, Discovery shows um, you less, than, um, less information than they saved. Um, these pictures um, can contain the same um, data. We have downloaded the data from their server. And the upper image is from Discovery Web GUI. Um, at the bottom you see um, the predicted data with GNU plot. Um, our goal is to determine which program was running based on power consumption. Is, um, not possible, so to be more precisely, um, we want to determine if a certain program was running. So what we have to do is predict um, the power consumption of one program and correlate power consumption with uh, the predictive 
predicted data. Um, some TV power consumption basics. Um, the power consumption of a TV is um, relevant. Um, power consumption um, of a TV is the brightness of the backlight and um, the starting position. So I've um, said before we have uh, we have one um, value per two seconds. So it's uh, important if the film starts at the first. Um, at, at the beginning of the two seconds or at the end. Um, the audio output is um, negligible, um, even so the manual brightness adjustment um, the user does. Um, interferences can be um, came from ambient light sensors and program changes. Um, at the bottom, we have um, the um, difference from highest to lowest consumption of, for example, a plasma TV, um, which shows us uh, 160 watt with a um, um, contrast of 2 million to 1. Um, in this, um, at this point, I have to say that the um, contrast is um, um, multiplied. Yeah, multiplied um, by the brightness of the backlight. So, um, with <coughs> um, we've tested another CRT in, with a difference about 50 watts, which has a um, contrast of 100,000 to one, and even a two LCD displays. Um, the first has a difference about three watts with a um, contrast of 4,000 to 1 without dynamic backlight. And the second LCD has about 70 watt with 30,000 to 1 as contrast. Um, to determine, the, uh, to predict the power of a um, film, we have to determine the minimum brightness um, with max power consumption so-called BIMIN. Um, as we see in this picture, we have um, three, can I use my mouse? Yeah. Um, we have three pikes at the beginning to find our test film. And after that, we, are, we display um, several frames, which first are black, then a gray one, and after that, a white, uh, a white one. Uh, the gray frames started at black and runs and um, runs to white. Um, it's RGB interpreted. Um, so um, we can um, no. we can see um, that the that after nearly um, 30 gray straps, uh, steps the maximum power consumption f with minimum brightness is reached. Um, so, um, for the power prediction, we analyze film chunks, maybe um, five minutes we've used in this context. Um, first of all, we um, you see on the left side the blue graph is the um, brightness of the frames. Um, we interpret... Um, um, So I think, I don't know about this. Um, I, I think, I think um, um, the, the blue one is um, the brightness of the film. So you take the home film or film chunk of five minutes, you get this five minutes and you see the brightness um, over this five minutes. And then as the power meter um, 
sees the power consumption during um, this whole five minutes, um, you are um, going to predict the power consumption based on this um, with this fo nice fancy formula up there and you get the green one. So this is the predicted power consumption and when you have in your home only um, the TV attached, then you have then we expect that you can see this um, um, power consumption in your smart meter. Um, yeah, I think that's one of... Um, much oh. better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have um, a demo. <laughs> so, um, I think uh, some of you know this movie. Um, it's... Uh, <laughs> The whole movie is about uh, 600 seconds. Um, I've cut it uh, until 26, I think. So, um, one moment. Um, you see the picture, and at the bottom you see the uh, consumption graph of our TV at home. So, um, the first um, part of the graph you see, I've cut um, the first uh, six seconds away. So, um, yeah. So, Lass alles ja, lernen, Schatz. Nicht durch die Nase. Schatz, ich bin gleich wieder da. Das habt ihr von eurer Raserei. So, um, at the top you see the uh, measure consumption um, of the TV. At the bottom you see um, the predictive data from the movie files. So as you can see here, it's nearly easy to match even uh, the red um, graphs are jolted, um, match this part to this and so on. So um, it's easy to find this with your eyes, um, but there's also a mathematical way. It's the Pearson correlation. Um, Pearson correlation um, short is um, you get a value about 1 to minus 1. Um, for example, um, 1 when it's a perfect match. Um, you so closer you come to the zero, um, um, so as less you, are, um, you have a relationship. So um, in this context, the signal noise of um, other um, devices doesn't matter. As you can see here at the bottom, um, the overlaid graphs um, after the Pearson correlation. So, um, privacy implications in Germany, we um, also differ between um, private sphere and intimate sphere. I think there's no English uh, translation for this. Um, with the data can transferred to Discovery, for example, um, there's a way to um, determine, determine your daily routine, direct insight into your private sphere, and even uh, to get a transparent citizen. Okay, so. Thank you. let's add me one thing, because um, it's the thing I'm very... Um, um, interested in explaining it. Um, this are, uh, which we see here, are um, data from the laboratory, so it was only the TV. But they did it also in a real world, so they had a house and they had um, the normal behavior of um, the whole household and they showed a film about um, one and a half hours and they took all the data from one month and they were able to find in which time the film was displayed on the um, telephone in the real world. So, and what the correlation coefficient does is that it gets um, this um, template which you do from the film you want to find and goes over the whole time and finds if it's matched and it's not, um, 
it's not a point if there is a noise. So even if there's a refrigerator or any other things that are going on, the, the first thing is the refrigerator is um, really um, every five minutes and you can um, build a filter on this to filter this out. And even the other noise is gonna switched out by using a correlation coefficient and this makes it very powerful. It's not like a game and we showed it here like, like doing so in a laboratory. It works really in practice with this two seconds intervals. Yeah, I'm true. Okay, so now um, we're going to do the hacking part. So I'm the um, electrotechnic guy and um, also I'm a Windows user and um, I'm not a very good programmer, but um, I was quite curious about this um, Discover G Smart Meter and I ordered it and um, it arrived at my home and I um, looked on their website and on their website, um, it's here in German, it's a German website and it's the former website, the website doesn't exist anymore, this three points. Um, they say, um, how is going to um, Discover to protect my data? And in the green one, they say um, that they use a web-based GUI, um, basically HTTPS, so that if you go to the GUI, to the web front end, and if you um, get, enter your password and your data is displayed, everything is secure, everything is encrypted, um, so there's no problem. Um, the yellow thing says um, that how is um, the smart meter talking um, to, the ser to their servers? And they say that the smart meter uses only an encrypted um, um, way of communicating, so every data is encrypted to provide the confidentiality of the data, and also the data is signed, um, which means um, that um, you have no possibility to um, um, alter the data um, to other values. And um, the red one says um, that is um, expected by independent experts um, regularly, they say. So I was quite curious about this, and when they um, installed it um, for me, um, it took a day that I got my password, and um, then I went to this um, HTTPS server, and when you um, print in HTTPS, you get a certificate, which is for um, asterisk.discovery.com, um, but the server is running on HTTPS discovery.com, so um, the issue of the certificate doesn't match to um, the website, and uh, Firefox shows you this little note, um, um, yeah, it's a wrong certificate. So then you accept the certificate and say, yeah, it doesn't matter, I'm quite sure that it's true, but then it doesn't show you um, the HTTPS site, it redirects you to the normal HTTP site. So when you enter your password, all the passwords are entered in clear. So, what? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm quite new here. Normally, it's um, the the um, congress is um, during my birthday, and normally I'm not at the congress because I'm festigating my birthday. This is the first time that I'm here, therefore I'm not sure um, how to behave here. <laughs> So, and um, data older than three months cannot dis be displayed. So when you have this uh, uh, longer than six months, then the older six months can't be displayed. But um, in the previous talk, he showed that using his own interface, it was, he was able to display even, uh, to get even this data. So um, the display is not because the data is deleted, missing the, the data. The, uh, the data is still there on the server and only the web interface doesn't display um, the data. So, the first thing, HTTPS is not there, so um, it's not used, all data is not deleted, and by the way, the password is quite easy to guess. So, when you know someone who has it, um, the um, login name um, and the password is easy to guess. When I know anybody here who has, um, the, um, has his name and um, um, first name, I get, can get the password from him, and it's not easy to change the password in the web interface. So, I tried it two times. Um, there is no web interface link there. You get an email where you can click on it and then you can change the password and either the new or the oldest password um, work anymore and you have to phone them up and they reset the password for you. So, we saw HTTPS not there. Um, what is about the smart meter communication? So, I said I'm a Windows guy, so um, inter internet things are quite um, curious to me. Wireshark, I never saw it before. So first I started to uh, monitor the smart meter communication. I started with the switch and some sync flooding on Windows. It's really difficult. So then I found an um, interface in the Fritz box which can capture the data. I think everyone here knows it more, better than me. You can use Wireshark to analyze and Ah, pretty easy even for a Windows user. And then you see that the smart meter sends HTTP POST request. 
Um, here you see some request. I um, hide it um, the MAC address of the smart meter because it's my MAC address. And um, you see, the, it's um, sent to a fixed IP. Um, it's um, contained the, uh, containing the measurement values in plain. So you see here, um, 000, kilowatt stunden, um, kilowatt hours, um, seconds. Um, ah, the seconds was also quite curious because it's not a Linux daytime. It's a daytime, I think, seconds since 3rd of December 1997. I didn't know what happens there, but this is the... <laughs> Start of I, I had a long time to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so and there's no cryptographic signature. And I showed it to my wife, and she said, "Oh, but it's encrypted. It's all encrypted stuff here." And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was quite difficult for me to explain for her, to her that it's not encrypted. So, and um, what we observe is that the smart meter um, provides its own identity um, by using its own MAC address. So, there's no protection at all. So, communication from the smart meter to the server um, is in plain text, not encrypted, not um, signature, um, or, and no MAC. And um, MAC, by the way, is message authentication code. I think you know it all. So, thus. I was quite curious, can I fake the data? So is it possible for me to fake the data? So I don't want to hack the smart meter. There are some fancy um, plomb on it, and you can't open it, and I want to, didn't want to destroy this. So the only thing I, 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 I thought, so when I send my own packets, it may be a little bit confusing when the smart meter is um, sending his own um, packages. So, uh, so I took out the cable from the smart meter, so it had no connection anymore. and. I set my own um, packet, so um, I had um, the, the MAC address of the smart meter, and um, I emulate um, the smart meter with my Windows program, and <laughs> I started to learn Python, because I never had Python before, and a guy told me, oh, you have to go take Python, and I started to, to make such a um, triangle, and it was not high enough, so at the second time, a little bit later, you see it was um, from um, 2 o'clock to 2.30, I uh, magnificate the um, um, triangle. And um, you see it works. It was um, pretty funny for me. And um, when you see it, I got the smart meter. <laughs> so I got the smart meter on um, June 9th. Um, on 10th, they sent me the password, and this is um, um, 2 o'clock p.m. Um, at the third day, I just have hacked it. So it was not a problem for a Windows user, it was not a problem for, for anyone. So, then I think, oh, when this is... So then Python was very bad for me, and I am Visual Basic guy, so I wrote my Visual Basic guy to print something on the net. So uh, you see, even Visual Basic is not good, or my programming skills are not good. The K and the V are not the same, but you see basically that it's possible um, to fake all the data. So what other fun can we have? Um, ah, yeah. And then, based on this, um, um, there was an article in a German um, newspaper it called CT. When you look at it, I don't know, um, the CT um, 23, you see it in, um, in the last slide. Um, and after this article, my um, smart meter didn't work anymore. So the article was issued <laughs> on um, October, I don't know, 20th or like this, and two weeks later, you see there's no power consumption at all for two months. And look on the day where it, work, where it started working, it was yesterday. <laughs> so and this web interface is also a little buggy, so this is only for fun. Um, there's nothing faked, only clicking in the web interface without faking data, and I was able to get out that my minimum power consumption was minus 106 <laughs> um, kilowatt. Yeah, and then we have the independent reviews from experts, so... <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Even when I'm not a real expert, um, but I think uh, we did it, and you can build your own opinion of, um, based of, on our results. So what's the summary? The summary is, it works for all smart meters if the Mac is known. It worked till the day I did it. So if it's now working, we tried it today because we wanted to do the fancy skyline, but um, it seems that my smart meter was updated and maybe it's um, now um, testing um, um, signature or things like this. I was not able to um, figure it out, but uh, we would have um, the skyline of Berlin in the background um, if it was working. So, um, Max are sequ uh, it's quite interesting, the Macs are sequentially is issued to the cu customer. So they have their own Mac range, you can find it in the RIPE database. And you will see that, um, or I could see my own IP address, my Mac address, the last um, byte. And I know another guy, he has um, 20, um, um, num uh, tw uh, plus 20 from me, so he had it, I think, a month later or two months later, and there you see how many smart meters are issued. <laughs> so, but the experiment I did don't have an effect for the billing, so I did nothing quite wrong because the fee which I have to pay is calculated once a year. So once a year, um, the, the company sends the smart meter to the, the, the power consumption from the year to uh, my provider and I have to pay for this. Um, and when you want to fake it, you have to do it um, by continuously spoofing the packet. So um, to get the effect for billing, you have to put a man in the middle attack and to send the packets every time, maybe see your own packets to make it more realistic. And um, the quite interesting thing is that I could do it for my smart meter, basically knowing the MAC address, and I know the MAC address from every other smart meter client, I can do it for everyone. <laughs> I can't see if it worked because I don't have the password, but I can do it for everyone. Yeah, and after publishing in the CT magazine, um, the smart meter um, didn't send any data. Yeah, our point of view is, yeah, why should we, know a sm uh, should we want a smart meter? So, um, for this point, um, it is billing relevant um, information. So, on Discovery, on their website, say, um, we're going to find the best provider for you, for your usage. So the German providers are normally every, um, are, are not um, daytime um, relevant, so you have um, the same fee for, for the whole year, and um, they could get, um, even when they get only one um, day value, um, one value each day, they could also predict um, what is the best um, um, provider for me, or the best tariff. Um, yeah, when we're going to have different rates, so when night rate is um, less expensive than day rate, then you could um, um, transmit even more, but not every two seconds. Yeah, from our point of view, when they say on the website the data should be encrypted inside, signed, now it's not more promised on the website, so after this um, article you don't find this website anymore, so maybe it's okay when they don't, don't sign it and encrypt it. <laughs> yeah, but... For me, I'm, I'm a nerd guy and I'm quite interested in this two seconds value, but um, from the um, technical point of view, it's, uh, it's really simple to do it. You can put a smart card or like a, um, a what's it called, a, a compact flash card or a small memory card in the smart meter and you can store all the data there. And from my local net, I can go to the smart meter, maybe with a um, fancy Windows program or with a um, web front end on the smart meter. I can also see the detailed information, but I don't, I'm not... Um, um, interested in sending all these two seconds um, to everyone um, in the world. Yeah, so I have finished, I think we have finished, so open for questions. Chris, thank you for the talk. So we now we have a Q&A till the end. We have an audio angel in the back and here I'm in front, but I will take the first question here, okay? Um, could you describe uh, the way how you got the meter? Like, was it an offer from your service provider or did you go to your service provider and say, I would like a smart meter? How is uh, the normal way for just any Joe who uh, pays a power bill to uh, get this power meter? Yeah, so it's in Germany. We talk over Germany. In Germany, it's since um, 1st of January 2010. Uh, um, it's allowed for a company to be a Messstellen-Anbieter. So they do only the smart meter thing. 
So it's a company which offers the service for you to measure your current. It's not the energy provider and it's not um, the one um, who, who um, has the wire to your home. And um, you can go on the website, you go discovery.com, you print out a PDF form and you get this um, fancy meter after five months or so. They c uh, come and they take away the old one. So you don't have to pay more for your own um, provider, um, the old um, um, smart meter or the old meter you have, and you get this fancy smart meter. Um, and um, the service they offer on their website is that they look at your behavior and they say you can change to another um, tariff and you um, gain money from this and if you don't get at least um, this 60, 60 euros a year, which is their cost, you don't have to pay for it. So in fact, they didn't tell anything to me, so I have the same provider um, as the last um, year or as since... Um, what was it, um, um, June, and I didn't pay anything for this. Um, yeah, and I'm living in Bochum, and Bochum is the Stadtwerke. I went there, and as there is also another rule that they have to provide you with the smart meter if you want to, you go to the Stadtwerke Bochum, and it was really funny. I said, oh, I want this funny, fancy smart meter, and they say, yeah, you can have it, but you have to change the tariff. So you're going to get a tariff, which is, I don't know the quite uh, the real numbers, but let's say now I'm paying 20 cents per kilowatt hour. Then they said, ah, you get a new tariff. Daytime is 28 cents per kilowatt hour, and night time is 19 cents. And I figured out even if I get my whole um, consumption in the night, so 95% of my consumption has to be in the night, that it's important that I can that I can do it without paying more. So they try to do a tariff that nobody wants it. Uh. <laughs> so I got it from Discovery and everyone who is in Germany can get it from Discovery. You can fill out this form and you will get it. Other questions? As far as I know, the BSI is developing a so-called protection profile for smart meters, which will be mandatory for all coming smart meters in the future. Can you say something about the correlation between your work and the protection profile? Um, are these attacks possible when the protection profile is in work? Yeah, let's say. So, the protection profile, I don't know if everybody knows it here, so it's um, common criteria, it's an evaluation, it's um, independent from the states, and you can um, go to, if you are a provider and you have um, a smart card you want to develop, or like a smart meter, then you go there and you say, I want a certification that this is secure. And to define what is secure, it's on your term. You can say it's secure because I say it's green. And then they prove that it's green and then it's secure. And for smart meters, um, they issued a protection profile. So a protection profile says what is the, um, uh, the profile, what is um, the requirements this device, a smart meter, has to fulfill. And this protection profile um, um, has a certain levels, and the level um, is the level um, four, which is like smart cards, the smart cards in your phone. And yeah, if you want to hear my opinion, so first the work is not related with this. I'm, I know about this, I know how is it working. Um, I even know that the protection profile um, is now being written by the BSI and then um, they issue it, you can load it, uh, download it on, um, on their website, but you have no rights to comment this because the comments can only give um, big institutions like energy providers or like big companies which want to sell smart meters. So we can, can't go there and, um, and give comments on this. So, and in my point of view, I don't know uh, hardware, which is not a smart card, um, which is um, evaluated come criteria um, level four, this, uh, this devices you find at the state in um, Botschaften and things like this where they're going to transfer, uh, transfer this data because when you want to reach the level four for a device, it means that all data has to be destroyed when you open it. So it's really difficult to do this for a smart meter. I never saw a device in, in my hands, only this um, um, diplomacy communication devices um, uh, which are um, in this um, highest level. So I don't know what I have to think about this. Um, I think it's quite impossible, maybe it's some politics that small companies are not able to sell smart meters when this is um, 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 issued and when it becomes law, but I even don't know um, if it becomes law 
in the next year. So um, when you would um, ask my expectation, I, it's like reading, looking to the future, reading in a glass um, ball or things like this. Any okay. more questions? Here next to me one. Um, actually, I um, just want to correct you. Um, uh, you can input this. This is currently being standardized. Uh, all this, uh, uh, let, let's, let's say the smart grid is being specified and standardized in IEC 61850 uh, 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 on IEC level. Uh, you can participate on the German mirror committees at DKE because every German citizen is, is allowed to participate. Actually, it's quite hard to find these things if you're not already in, and you only get the documents if you're really a, a, do, a participant of the committees. That's unfortunate. And, yeah, that's and a big, pro big pro a problem. And as I know, I have some kind of access to, these, uh, to those documents. Uh, um, the security stuff is not standardized as of now. They are just starting to talk about it. And so I assume it will take another two years at least. Yeah. So the, the common criteria profile is um, there. They say that it's only allowed from, from, um, from um, the big companies. Um, but for um, the IEEE and other standardization stuff, I, I think it's also possible, yeah. Hi. Um, you mentioned uh, that your recommendation is to make it so it only uploads the data once per day, but doesn't that defeat the whole purpose of this device, is that, the, that they want highly accurate usage data so that they can uh, trade energy credits and whatever? Um, so yeah, they want accurate data to um, track you and, um, yeah. I don't know, but um, on the website they say they want to do it for um, uh, finding the perfect um, solution for me to get paid. If they want more, they have to do it, yeah, but they don't tell about it. So sure, um, another thing is that they say that it's um, not this company that is said in the public, when you look on the internet, it said that um, smart meters going to help you to use the power grid better. So to know if someone has um, more power consumption, less power consumption, even when everyone is um, um, producing its own power by wind energy or um, solar energy or things like this. But in my opinion, I'm electrotechnical and I had um, this energy stuff in the university and I know that the power provider knows the um, load of the whole net in the microsecond where the load is. So it's not possible by internet, by measuring it in a home, accumulating every data, sending it via TCP IP2 servers for every German citizen um, to then get the actual knowledge of the power consumption. They have it just in the second where it consumes because when they don't are uh, able to provide this power, the net breaks down. So I don't know why they want it, but sure, when they want to um, have exact um, 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 use it from you, then they have um, to measure this. In. <laughs> yeah, we have time. I think we have been quite quick. Yeah. Um, okay, um, so I have two questions. First, is my understanding correct that you hooked up the power meter just to your DSL modem at home? That yep. you just basically use whatever internet you already have? Yeah. This is um, for Discovery. Is um, um, is it like this? It's in their um, in their PDF file, which you have to sign. You have to provide the DSL line um, for their power meter to send. Therefore, I was able to monitor everything. Okay, and uh, second, uh, your old meter is gone. Are you now stuck with the device? Are you happy about that? Yeah, uh, I have been at the Stadtwerke Bochum and asked how much does it cost when I don't want it and they have to re reinstall it to me. And they said it cost um, 50 euros and I said, okay, 50 euros, it's okay. And <laughs> but, but I signed a contract for two years with Discovery. It's like a cellular phone. Um, you mentioned uh, the net breaking down. Um, I would like to point out something. There's a novel of the renewable energies law in Germany, and it says that certain renewable energy uh, systems have to have a, 
a technical system that allows them to be remotely shut off. Um, now we, I think there are still bets accepted that they will fuck that up. And the law is uh, coming effecting, uh, effective in two days' time. So um, it's probably going to be very interesting to have a talk here next year uh, on how to shut down the German uh, power grid because politicians, <laughs> because politicians, because politicians want uh, to have a polis possibility for uh, ne the network operators, which equals in a possibility for hackers. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hi. Um, I just posted on Twitter that there's a project coming up in Berlin where 10,000 uh, households are going to use smart meters uh, in the near future, and uh, that may be of interest. It's in the Märkisches Viertel here in Berlin. So uh, I guess the people don't have to choose whether <laughs> they use the old ones or the new ones. Yeah, maybe. So I'm not from Berlin, I'm from Bochum, but it's quite interesting. Maybe some guy here from Berlin can check it out also. Hi, um, I just quickly want to introduce myself um, to the audience. Um, I'm Nikolaus Staatsrat, I'm actually the CEO of Discovery. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And I just want to um, lay out a couple of words um, for clarifications. First of all, um, um, first of all, um, I'm actually um, quite proud that we're actually the only utility independent metering operator in Germany. Um, I just want to say this because it's actually tough to be a metering operator. Um, hey, come that's, here. No, that's no explanation um, for having those security issues. Yeah, I am terribly sorry for this. And <laughs> some of them we've resolved, um, the remaining ones we're working on. And actually, I appreciate um, the help you guys are giving. And just, um, um, just. Yeah, come, come here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and very briefly, why do we collect um, per second data? Um, and I think the main reason, the main motivation for our business model is to help individual consumers to reduce their energy use. Yeah? And this is why we collect the detailed data, not to know what you're watching on TV, but to see whether you have an old fridge or an old washing machine or whether you forgot to turn on off the light or the, the iron or something like this. Yeah, that's the main reason for collecting the detailed data. Um, our product is voluntary, yeah? so by definition um, you kind of opt in if you become a customer um, that we collect this data. We'll also give the opportunity to opt out of the detailed data collection. And um, what else did I want to say? Um, yeah, I think, um, oh, yeah, and if any of you is really into maths and statistics and loves to play with data, um, come up to me later. Um, it's a tough problem. Discovering what you watch on TV um, might be the easy part of it. There's lots of hard problems still to be solved. If you la like these kind of problems, please talk to me later. <laughs> So maybe even some questions to Nikolaus? <laughs> I think there's a question over here. Dear Audio Angel, do you have a question there? Do you have a question still? Yes. Uh, based on the data you already have, um, do you think you will find a new profile, uh, a payment profile for uh, this guy? <laughs> <laughs> If he's still the Stadtwerke Bochum, I'm 100% sure um, that we can, yes. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, well, since you're here, we have been speculating a bit about the business model, but you might be very well placed to explain what exactly is it uh, you're trying to, to run your, the company off. Sure. So we've got the three main revenue streams. One is um, that we charge you something for the installation of the meter and for the running of the meter. So we take um, five euros per month, 60 euros per year. Um, but you save at the same time the money you pay in your like base fee to your current utility company, which is around 20, 25 euros. Yeah. So your additional cost is 30 to 40 euros if you use our service. And we also like we don't do that yet, but um, we intend to earn commissions when we recommend you to change your energy provider, and also. If we tell you buy this new energy efficient fridge, then possibly the manufacturer or the retailer um, like pays us a finance fee um, for recommending those products. But in any case, we'll be as neutral as algorithmically possible um, to recommend you the products in your interest rather than maximizing commissions or whatever. And just one, one point, I think it makes a lot of sense to provide this business model independent of the utilities because if you think of it, a utility will never tell you go to another utility because it's a bit cheaper and the utility has no inherent interest to tell you where you're wasting energy. Yeah, they want to sell you as much kilowatt hours and not as little. And I think that makes us unique um, even if we still um, have a lot of work to do. Um, could you... Could you Could you uh, um, decrease the, these uh, two seconds or rather increase it to say once an hour if the, if the individual customer wanted that? In fact, we plan to give our customers, customers the option to, like just on your web browser, you can go into, what is it, privacy mode or a surf incognito. You could say, um, do not store um, per second level, but just take a daily measurement or 15 minute measurement. We need some measurements, obviously, um, to give to the utility for billing purposes, but obviously we don't need per second values. So we will create the opportunity to opt out of per second um, measurements. Okay, so um, you said that there is two basic purposes. Uh, the one is to find the right tariff, uh, for which I think uh, the presenter has shown uh, quite reasonably that uh, per day data or maybe even uh, per month data would be sufficient for finding the right, uh, for finding the right utility to pay. Um, and the second one you mentioned was the sort of uh, educational goal. Um, uh, of uh, finding uh, the energy of, see of seeing the energy consumption of certain devices uh, within your power uh, consumption. Now, um, as the presenter has also said, for this it would not be necessary for the data to be sent over the internet. Um, in fact, it would be easier and even more fault-proof uh, if the data were only accessible on the local area network of the person's home. So it would never have to leave the person's home. Why is it being sent over the internet? Is it because you think it would be easier for people to handle, or is it because you want the data for something else? <laughs> okay, I, I think it's mostly a question of philosophy, what's the right approach. The other company which offers a smart meter to you across Germany is Yellow. They actually follow um, the other policy. They have the granular data only locally, but if you speak to the people at Yellow, and to the field technicians, it is actually a nightmare to have this local air network, like you swap out your DSL provider, you have a new DSL box, a new router. Um, it's a lot easier um, to get the data to a central place in the internet to access it through the browser rather than setting it up um, the local infrastructure. So it's just, I think from a usability perspective, it's superior, also it's superior because now you're sitting here in the Congress, maybe you were wondering whether before you left your house, you, you turned off your, you know, your cooking or left the light on or something like this. If the data is contained locally, maybe you, because you know how, you know, how to access remotely um, your house, you can access it, but 
the ordinary person will have great difficulty with this. And also, we want to be able in the future to send you an alert if you're not at home and you forgot to turn off like, you know, your, your cooking equipment and stuff like that. And all those things are obviously impossible to do if the data never leaves your house. Yeah, so... <laughs> Give us a little bit of time, but you can. <laughs> you, you'll use a mobile app, which we'll provide, and obviously you give us, um, uh, you know, you opt in to share this information with, you, with us, if you do. But you're not forced to do that, obviously. I would have another question to the original speaker. Sorry for interrupting your plug, Nicolas. Thank you. <laughs> um, your analysis refers or is based on the two second interval. Now we've been speaking a lot about the Discover G solution. I wonder, are you aware of any other companies or utilities that do have a similar solution that has a two second interval for um, transmitting the data to a central point? Yeah, we showed up. The only thing we had um, have been in our laboratory or in their laboratory. I'm not sharing the laboratory with him. Um, where is it? This um, three smart meters, and there was um, the smart meter is every time the same. So the downer part, which um, measures the power consumption, is every time the same. And um, the smart meter, which sends this data, um, there are two other we, we um, looked at. And one is um, called um, Theben Connexa, and it sends one value every 10 seconds, and the other um, one um, value every two seconds. And other, I don't aware that there are others, I don't know. Right, now these are technical solutions for implementing such a thing. I wonder, are you aware of any other utilities, because I am not, uh, that uses the two second intervals? As far as I know, all other utilities do use a 15 minute interval. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, so sure. just I, I, I you know, don't know about It's just about, because you, on some slides you said, um, if you know the MAC address, you can do that for any smart meter. Yeah. And you're not referring that to the Discover G solution because that's, I think, that's an important point. As far as I know, Discover G is the only one who transfers that two second interval. 15 minute interval is bad, but two second interval is a bit worse even. Yeah, um, but yes, um, to fake it, it was based on Discover G because we looked only at the packets from Discover G. If other um, encrypt or sign it, we, we don't know. Um, um, this two don't? Uh, no, this is not sending, how was it working? Um, the last one, the Comet, um, doesn't send any data to the internet. Uh, you just open a uh, TCP stream, port 5000, and uh, then it sends the data only to you. Um, with the team Connexa, um, we've didn't try it. <laughs> so um, it's, um, we've seen the um, data rate is um, nearly 10 seconds and um, broke up at this point. The point I'm trying to make is some people might have the impression that a 15 minute interval is a lot better, or, well, not as bad as the two second interval. So I think that they would get the wrong point. So that's just that's an important issue, I think. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, the point is that um, when you have the 15 minutes interval, maybe some privacy issues uh, don't occur. You are surely not able to um, um, see um, the phone, but um, the, um, the possibility to um, fake the packets, it's, it's the same. When they are not secured, you can fake them as well. OK, so we have uh, only two minutes left. So any very, very important questions here? Very, very important, please. Oh, we have the IRC now. We need to take care of the guys in the IRC, you know. Yeah, there's a question here um, to the CEO. Are you planning to update uh, the smart meters to do only signed and, un and encryption uh, communication with the servers? Definitely, that's for sure. And those guys uh, have offered um, their help to make sure that not only we think it's secure, but they also think it's secure. Thank you very much to the gentleman who did this work, it's fantastic. Um, speaking as someone who's developing a competitor product where we do all the processing in the home, I was wondering what kind of interface would you guys like to see on the process data that both Discovery and Navitas are looking to generate in the home? I don't understand. So I work for a company that is also looking at this high-res data very quickly. Um, we're doing the disaggregation as well. Uh, but we do it in the home, in the unit itself. 
what kind of interface would you guys like onto that data, perhaps without it getting out into the internet? Yeah, I think um, a real good, as the data has to be transferred to the internet, some data, so each day or each hour, then I would like to have the same interface, so like the Ethernet interface for my local area network, like um, we discussed before, and then or with an application to get the data or with a web interface. Great, thank you. So, and this is it, the time is off. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.